sorry, I was thinking about parents preparing their children for life. Like my therapy, I think went really well for me because my parents had prepared me a lot for life enough to know that I don't get to use my mental illness as an excuse, but I am more lenient on people who are mentally ill. So I am more lenient if you're sick, but again, uh, that doesn't give you an excuse to be a bad person. Okay, ready? I, I'm not obligated to, and I, le I can't afford to. Guess what? Doesn't matter. You can't just tell me I have two weeks to find somewhere. You've had over a month. And no, you haven't. Look, you have done nothing but dig your heels in and try and make me feel bad about your- No, I haven't. Bad. I've been trying to educate you. No, your education- Did you hear that? Like, I've been trying to educate you. I don't know what this person's situation is, so let's watch the whole video. But you know what's really hard is, like, the stereotype of what kind of a person they are. It's hard when you stereotype, but there it is. And then on top of that, the reason I strongly believe in some sort of, um, <clears throat> well, actually, hold on. Let's keep watching. Hold on. Brainwashing. No, it's not. You just won't listen to me. No, I'm not going to listen to this crap. Now you talk. I have schizophrenia. I don't care what you have. Does she literally, do they have schizophrenia? Or do they think they have schizophrenia? I say this because the self-diagnosing part of our community is failing itself. And at the same time, some people have to have some sort of a diagnosis without an official diagnosis. Like my doctors have not put on my paperwork yet lupus because they're waiting for a couple of things. But the doctor swears it's lupus. He's like, Brittany, this is lupus. My nurse practitioner is like, Brittany, this is lupus. And so they're, I'm living like it's lupus. I have all the symptoms of lupus, but because for their own legal, you know, they have to make sure they're not putting it on my paperwork yet, but it's like, I have like, that's what we call it. Every time I get on the phone, they're like, look, cause you have lupus, you have to do this. Right. So either my doctors are gaslighting me or something, but I'm in line right now to go to rheumatology to double check a bunch of stuff, but I have every symptom of lupus. I'm allergic to the sun now. I can't eat what I've wanted. I'm losing my hair. Like everything makes sense for lupus. Okay. Um, the tests are coming back within the range, but there's always like, you know, so sometimes not having an official diagnosis or getting one is hard. It is hard, but you can have at least a medical professional reassure you like I have mine, like I have an official diagnosis for DB, um, borderline. I have an official diagnosis for PTSD and that was done, right? I, once I get my official diagnosis for lupus, like it's kind of sucks because insurance companies will punish me for it. But also my doctors are there to reassure me that it's not just in my head. That yes, from everything they've seen, definitely lupus. My nutritionist is like, yes, Brittany, we have a problem. So I've got three people who are medical professionals telling me that I have the thing that they know how to help me with. So I believe them, I have all the symptoms, but I, you see how I'm relying on them to tell me what I have? I'm not self-diagnosing myself. I would, why would I, I wouldn't even know how to give myself a diagnosis of illness. But not everyone with chronic illness has a diagnosis. I have so many people in my community that are living with a real chronic illness that they can't quite diagnose. But at least if you're going to doctors, and most of the people I know in my community who have a no, have no official diagnosis, have medical professionals they're working with. So again, it's not like we're ghosting up symptoms. There's something happening, right? And we might not have a name, but we know it's there because we've had the right people give us the reassurance, right? If you're self-diagnosing yourself, I'm going to have a problem with that. If you haven't had a medical professional, at least reassure you that that's what's happening. And I don't know if this person has had that because if they're saying they're schizophrenic, then I would hope that their parents would um, be open to that idea. Um, but let's keep watching. I don't. You just won't listen to me. No, I'm not going to listen to this crap. Now you talk. I have schizophrenia. I don't care what you have. I don't. <laughs> it doesn't mean we live in squalor. True. And it doesn't true. mean you're a bully. That's true. Just because you're sick doesn't mean you get to be a fucking asshole, which is what Janae, uh, Janet, Janae, Janae. Guys, what's that girl's name who played Sam on iCarly? She wrote that book, I'm Glad My Mom Died. Her mom had cancer, so? Just because you have cancer or an illness doesn't mean you get to go around raping babies or in her case, molesting her child. Like just because you're sick doesn't mean you get to hurt people, right? You, I'm not even a bully. You Honestly, they look like a bully. So. Literally dead name me, misgender me, and so. Okay, so they're living in a conservative household where they're not gonna be um, seen for who they are. I would recommend moving out. That's what I did. Apparently 
is and this idea that you can't oh, okay not clear to people that i am mentally and physically disabled i mean i think it's pretty clear but also i i don't know what that means right like i don't know what it means to be um mentally and physically disabled i meet a lot of people who are in those categories and they find resources to manage it like I know it's hard I know a guy in this town who has DID and he lives off government help and assistance um, because he reached out for those resources so you might be able to move to a place where you can get those resources but a problem is, is like when you're sick and if you also are a shitty personality person maybe they also have narcissism we don't know or maybe they're just like a real asshole right like we don't know it's harder to get help right so I, I don't know if I'm already I get bad, bad vibes from this person but again I'm I'm an intuition kind of person. I can't just go out and get a fucking job. Apparently, I have to remind people that we're in the middle of the people have been asking for updates and I'm going to update and also clear some things up. Apparently, it's not clear to people that I am mentally and physically disabled. If you're in the age of being able to live alone and you live with your parents and you nag them and you nag them and you nag them, it's a possibility that eventually they will kick you out. Yeah. That being said, it's not because you are mentally ill. It excuses you from everything. It, it doesn't. Your, your illness is not an excuse for everything. I cannot. Exactly. Like my therapist literally said, Brittany, your borderline is not an excuse for bad behavior. And I was like, oh, but if, but, but, but I was hurt, but I was, but, but they hurt me. And she goes, I know. But does that mean you get to hurt other people? I'm like, fuck, what is this, kindergarten? I, in my 20s, in my late 20s, I had to go back to kindergarten. And I had to learn that an eye for an eye is not reasonable, right? I can't just go around hurting people because I've been hurt. Which is why I struggle so much. Which is why I call destiny. And why I ask people, like, what do you think I should do over my marriage and my religious parents' background, right? I'm not trying to hurt them. And I think they would respect me more if I just did my own thing. But again, like, I don't want, I have to either choose to have the life I want that best suits me. And that means not being in a place that triggers me, right? So, like, I can't – and my parents, too. Like, again, if you decide to stay in the environment that triggers you, there's something there that's not very efficient when it comes to just surviving. Like, common sense, going back to what W said, right, is have the common sense to leave an environment that's toxic to you or changes a person if you feel like you are a reflection of that environment. Um, let's see. Uh, Long Gone says maybe it's just me, but when I – but when I can tell that something I'm struggling with is affecting someone near me, I feel immediately guilty and want to rectify it however I can. It's because guilt is a reflection of our values when we break them and shame is when we break the values of the bubble. So yes, like you have a value system that tells you don't harm people just because. And so if you find your behavior hurting people, you do want to rectify it because it's within your values like mine. So I agree. And that's like, that's where I'm coming from. But you might be a person that says, because I'm sick, I get to be whatever I want to be, which I've met those people too. Please, 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 please. Let's just admit that some sick people are bad people. Like being sick does not make you a good person, right? Um, Ingrid says, this is why I'm working on my anger issues. It's definitely caused by my mental illness, but it still hurts people. Exactly. Like it takes a great discipline to be a good person. And I think most people are good people, but a lot, some people, just some are not the best at peopling. So maybe they're not an evil person, but they're not good at peopling. They're not good at be, being a part of a group, of a culture, of a society. They have no one they can rely on. And I think sometimes it's a reflection of who you are. More than um, like W and I just talked about, right? Like you have to earn people's love, you know, in a lot of ways. Like, yes, it's unconditional, but that doesn't mean you have to, you can be in their space. This mom, your parents don't owe you housing past the age of adult. If you want to be an adult and you want to be considered like capable, then you have to be capable to be an adult. If you are an adult child and you want to admit I am of the age of an adult, but I still need to be treated like a child, you should ask that of people. Ask people to treat you like a child and see if they have the energy to do so. But that's the problem is like that's what this person so far has been asking for, which I dated a girl with schizophrenia 
And she lived with her dad, but she was a hard worker. She worked every day. That's how we met at work. She was um, a deli person who was uh, just like me and then moved up to manager. So like she worked her ass off while hearing voices and she did the best she could. She brought home the bacon. Her dad worked full time, but she really didn't let her schizophrenia be the reason she couldn't work. So again, everyone has a different relationship with it. I'm not telling you that if you have it, you have to then work or something. Um, Even with my own lupus, it makes it hard to work sometimes, right? So again, just being open to the idea this person might might not be bad, but I don't like the way already that they're expressing themselves. It's in, a little entitled to me, sort of. Not be a jackass to this man, and then after that, claiming on, hey, you know what? I'm mentally ill. At some point, I'm gonna have to do something about it. At some point, I'm gonna have to do something about it, and <laughs> not to be a problem to people, or not to be a burden to people. You understand what I'm saying? Third thing that I'm gonna say, the mom said, oh, you're not allowed to be a bully and everything and stuff and stuff like that. That's what I've been founding every community that's been ostracized being. They eventually become a bully. They eventually become a bully. We could name the community, it's gonna be that. Whether it's a uh, woman with feminism. At first Seven says, serious question, how do you feel about guilt and shame through the five lens? Um, it's a, it's a part of, um, I think it's a, being a five does not mean you transcend being a person. Okay. I just want to like make sure that it's clear for every fucking person listening to me right now. Being a five does not mean you transcend being a person. It does not mean you lose your connection to your humanity. It means you, you are more human. You are more in tune with your humanity, hopefully, because you realize like the most beautiful thing in the world is that everything is sort of a construct and that our humanity is the greatest thing about us. So hopefully, hopefully, if you feel like you're introspective, you would know shame and guilt are necessary because they are a part of the human condition. The relationship we have to shame and guilt is not necessarily one way. So again, Shame is when you've betrayed your values, the culture's expectation of you. And guilt is when you've betrayed your own. If you feel, if you never feel guilty, you are either always adhering to your own values or you don't have any. And if you're always feeling shame, you are either being bogged down and trapped by the bubble or uh, and you're probably not in an environment you should be in. Um, or you just don't, you like you're, you're having a bad relationship with the perception of shame. Like again, I never felt, oops, I never felt like shame over my sexuality or me being like, um, like sleeping around or anything like that because I left the church and I left my family's home before I ever had sex. Like I was living on my own, paying my own goddamn rent before I ever let anyone inside this body. So I didn't have any religious association with sex. I never had any, like, uh, I never felt bogged down by the obligation I had to my bubble around shame of sex. So again, that perception didn't need to be there. But some of the people I know, who stayed in those conservative bubbles and then tried to become sexual felt a lot of shame because they knew they were betraying the expectation of the bubble. So again, your perception, your title, how you, you know what I'm saying? Like how you, your title, wait, oh no. Did I just read the word title? Why did I say that? Your title? Did I read that word somewhere? No. Your job as a person is to have a good idea of how you're perceiving your environment and then yourself. Like right now, the question I'm asking myself is how does this person we're watching how do they perceive themselves is how I'm thinking about it. First needed, then become a bully. Hmm? Whether it's become the community, first needed, then you become a bully. That's why your mama kicked your ass out. On the point of this topic, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you the spicy take. This is a spicy take. Go ahead. I don't even think she got schizophrenia. Listen, I'm gonna be honest with you, just listening to her talk and her going through that whole thing, I think some people just love the whole mental health label. I right? didn't want to go there. I'll go there. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. Go in. Yeah. Ye. New year, Ye. new me. Cancel me, bitch. <laughs> I'll say, I don't think she do. I don't think she got it. That's you. I don't, I don't care. Bash. I don't think she has it either. Like reflexively, I want to say they don't have it, but I want to see a diagnosis or I want to see a medical professional because DID and schizophrenia are the number two, like, the two mental illnesses that all these fucking Gen Zers love to pretend they have because they're the most like insane, but also they allow them to be crazy without any accountability because no one knows how to handle them. But I know people with DID, real DID, and I know people with real schizophrenia. It's different for everybody. So obviously they're very hard, but you can be 
pretty functional with the right medication and the right help. So again, either she's not being helped or they're not being, I don't know their gender, either they're not being helped or they themselves are making it up so they don't have to work. And that's the problem. I have literally known people who pretend they're sick so they don't have to work, which is why a part of evolution is survival of the fittest, bitch. If you can't figure it the fuck out, you can die. You don't need to procreate. You don't need to be a part of the next generation. There is something that is really, really ruthless about being a human. And that is the part where you're going to die and your genetics might not live on. And that's up to you, right? Like that is up to you because at the end of the day, if we're evolved animals over time, if you do not believe in God, and I doubt this blue haired nose piercing person does, because when I had blue hair and a nose piercing, (laughs) so, okay, maybe they believe in God, but if they don't, then there's no obligation their parents even have to maintaining a relationship with somebody they don't like. So again, why without religion, right? If you're a secularist, then you get to make up your own rules. And if you're making up your own rules, why does this person feel they are obligated to having some sort of help? Jason says, can I ask what she is talking about? We are watching Abba and Preach talk about this mentally ill person who claims to have schizophrenia, which could be true. I am very open to that, obviously. But again, because everyone's so self diagnosed right now, I have a big I have a big hesitation around it. Dude. I think people like all kinds of layers. I've seen people fucking claim the autism thing with Bro. zero diagnoses because it's cool to be autistic. Bro. Okay, listen, I'm not. I will say this, though. I have a lot of friends that are so obviously autistic, but they can't afford to get officially tested because it's thousands of dollars. But I will tell you, I meet a lot of people who think they're autistic and they're probably not. But like some of my friends are definitely autistic, but they they can't afford to get tested. But it's like, it's like, bro, autism. And they're like, I think so. And I'm like, cool. <laughs> like, it's very expensive to get diagnosed. I will say that. But yes, a lot of people are claiming to be autistic with no real indicators. I'm not joking. There is something very bizarre with people wanting to claim illnesses and... Ah, Ingrid said it the best. I have a couple of friends who have DID. They aren't the most productive, but they try their best. Exactly. You just have to try your best and hopefully be a warm and kind person, right? Like hopefully be a warm and kind person. And I think that's the thing is like when I imagine a person who's disabled or a person who can't work, as long as you're warm and kind, you will have a community behind you unless you're completely without, right? Unless it's um, completely without. I don't know. Ingrid says is it is not cool to be autistic. I think in some bubbles it is. Like in Seattle, I felt a lot of people thought they were cooler if they had autism, which is why I don't think they had autism. Do you know what I'm saying? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I think in certain bubbles I was in, people all wanted to be autistic. And I'm like, what is this? And like, when I look at them, I think it's a made up diagnosis because they're kind of excited about it in a way that I'm like, Why are we excited? Like, what's going on? Even my borderline, I regret being a 15, 14, 13 year old and saying, I remember being a teenager, like a 13, 14 year old, 15 year old. And I remember saying to myself, like, um, like not saying to myself, but romanticizing people who had things going on that were hard. And now I have three diagnoses and I'm like, never mind, take it back. I take it back. I take it back. 30, 15 years later in my 30s, I'm like, take it back, take it back, take it back. But it's too late. Okay, so, you know, it's funny. It's like when you think you want an illness because you think it might make you edgy and then you get one, you're like, never mind. Like, I lied, you know, because the romanticism of it is in media. There's a romantic side of being other and then there's the bad side of being other. Issues that they don't have. It's been it's going... like the Rachel Dolezal thing. Yes. You need to be like, yeah, that thing. I think Rachel is mentally ill, but I also her upbringing was so hard. But I do think it's like partly mental illness or, or a, a perception dissonance. But you know, yes. forget transracial, trans diagnosis. Yes, it's been going like that for years. Remember, I remember when I was. She in- said you j- dead named me. You misgendered me. You won't acknowledge. Like, oh my gosh! Like, how many layers of pressure you going on in this household? Really? I'm, I'm just saying. I, I could be wrong. No, could no. come out that I don't think you are. But. You know, just hearing her talk and be like, I don't think people realize this, but I have mental health. Like, I don't know. There's something about it that just didn't smell right. And it's like, oh. Rachel Dolezal has an OnlyFans? <laughs> I love OnlyFans. Rachel has an OnlyFans? Girls, we're going to look that up. I'm going to review it. I got to review it. Does she really have an OnlyFans? I have to. I have to review it. I have to review. I love OnlyFans. I'm a big pro sex worker fan. So I'm only as a sex worker to a sex worker. I love 
I love it. Okay, we're oh, looking at that. You can't up. find a job? You probably can't with those piercings in your nose. You probably can't with that hair color and that unscruffed look. Listen, she just looks like a giant brat who doesn't <laughs> want to assume responsibilities and is trying to be interesting by looking crazy. Love That's what it child, appears man. on the. I'm sorry, this comment's killing me. Alara said, oh, no, no, sorry, not Alara. My bad, girl. Um, Dave, it says, these two remind me of the Hodget twins. Stop it. This is, <laughs> you know what's so funny? Because my brother's conservative. I was like, hey, um, I was like, there's a possibility um, I might do like a collaboration with um, Abba or Preach or Abba. And um, I'm just like, hey, letting you guys know that I might have work coming up, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, he got so excited because he confused Abba and Preach with the the twins, but they're totally different parts of the internet. And I thought that was so funny because they're so different to me, obviously, but I know them distinctly differently. Like I know them, but some people, it's like, I swear it's hilarious. The outside looking. That is so funny. For the parent who's being patient, it's like, yo, listen, you of age, it's time for you to be an adult. She didn't want to kick her out. She said, pay your part of the rent. My parents charge my sister $600 a month to live at home. Pay your part of the rent. I don't think that's an unreasonable thing to ask. I don't think that's an under. And, and if she's saying that, you know what that, why that probably is? It's probably because this kid's not going to school. They're not doing much with their life. They don't have a job either. His so audio like, went out. You're being a fucking deadbeat and you're yeah. hiding behind this mental illness and this kind of bullying to try to emotionally manipulate me into doing what you want. That's what it appears like on the outside. Now, there's a lot of details that can make me change my mind. Okay, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but just using the few words that the mom used, and also what's interesting is the girl filmed it and put this online, and she's the one freaking out and yelling and being outrageous. Well, the mom's like, "Look, okay, we've tried, but you got to do something now." It happens, bros. It happens. I don't know what to tell you. Is she a one? <gasps> like, okay, because again, even if you're disabled, even if you are, wouldn't you be grateful that people are letting you live somewhere? And I doubt this mom came out of nowhere and kicked her out. I have a feeling it definitely built up. Do you know how delusional you have? Even if she's a conservative mother, conservative parents will ostracize their kids and kick them out. But certain parents will have you at home as long as you follow their rules, like my parents. So, okay, I'll tell you. My sister lives at home. The average apartment is eighteen to $2,200 for one bedroom, one bath in where they live in Southern California. So my sister looked at her paycheck and said, okay, I could pay $1,800 to live on my own or I could pay my parents $600 to live under their roof with their rules. So my parent, my sister can't wear shorts. She can't like be really like, she can't bring boys home, obviously, or girls home, obviously. There's a lot of constraints, but do you want to pay $1,800 for a one bedroom? You have to be to put that shit up and think you're going to be the one who's going to get sympathy. Girl, you yeah. filmed that interaction with your mom, not with your mom. If your mom would put up that, she put it on the internet. Did she ask her? Did she ask her mother consent before she put it on the internet? I doubt it. Video, I would have felt different, but it was you who decided to film that interaction and upload it. That's you trying to garner sympathy from people and manipulate. Okay, first of all, two comments. Robert, Brittany, it is your fate to do a, that OnlyFans review. It is truly my fate. And two, from Phantom, I'm literally 29 and still gladly live at home. Fuck rent. Literally, if you get along with your parents and you can make it work, make it work. That's you. I'm just saying. What's a date in priest life look like? I wake up in the morning like everybody Ooh! else. Then... Preach got a lucky wife. Well, I take care of my uh, wife. Uh, okay, thank uh, you, Preach. Ah! I train a bit, do my little <laughs> boxing, then after that I wash myself, and after that I pet it. Train a bit, do my little boxing, then after that I wash myself. It's and fresh. I there's one oh, in order to spend Preach is so I funny. See that the real package stack and Preach looks good. His hair looks different too. He got a cut, right? Or is it just shaped different? Oh. <gasps> You can cute. Oh, I have some thoughts. On oh. Damn it. We're watching it again. I have some thoughts on this as a mentally and physically disabled person. This person uploaded a video screaming at their parent because they wanted four weeks notice when they are not obligated to get that because they are not paying rent to live there. They use the excuse of being mentally and physically disabled to not be able to get a job. Let's talk about that. I myself am physically and mentally disabled. I've gotten four jobs during the pandemic. 
And before anyone says it's because I live in a big city, I got two of those jobs in a very tiny city with under 3,000 people. Yes, disabilities can be debilitating, and that's what they are, disabilities. Which sometimes mean you can't always work, and that's fine. But from what she said, I know personally tons of people that work with the disabilities that they have. Using disabilities to be completely rude to random people or your parents or family is not okay. And it's definitely not okay to use your disability as an excuse to not pay rent. Where Look you're at living. this. You've been going <laughs> And it's definitely not okay to use to be completely rude to random personally tons of people that work with the disabilities that they have. Using disabilities to be completely rude to random people or your parents or family is not okay. And it's definitely not okay to use your disability. <laughs> this doggo is so cute. I have to post Indiana took the I have the cutest picture of Indiana. I will post it. I'll use an excuse to not oh pay rent gosh. wherever you're living. It's so been cute. going on for ages because I remember Look. Sometimes you will be disabled and you have mental health problems and you won't get the help you need. Sometimes you will have those things and you'll take advantage of people. Sometimes you will be a bad person who becomes a good person. Sometimes you may be a good person whose illness causes you to be a bad person. Either way, if you think you're cognizant enough to choose your life, to say who you are, to advocate for yourself, then you must have enough agency to be kind to other people. So if you have enough agency to advocate for yourself, you should have enough agency to be kind to people, right? And sometimes even when they're not being kind to you, that's something that I'm really trying to find balance with. Look, when I say I'm a five, okay, that is one version of reality that I think I'm trying to explain to you guys that I think is probably more reasonable than this idea of like transcending our humanity, which I think is silly. I think it's a denial and a cognitive dissonance to transcend humanity, right? But I think when you live actively in the present, you have a different relationship with your perception of reality that allows you to transcend the pettiness of humanity, which I think is different because it makes you grateful because now you're humbled. And wisdom is something that I think I will earn over time. I don't find myself to be a very wise person. I find myself to be Again, a very introspective person, but wisdom is more than introspection. Wisdom is another part of uh, something that coincides with introspection, but wisdom itself is its own journey. And that's one I hope to grow old figuring out. And I think like my, my parents and me, like I have like really good news to tell you guys maybe in a few days or next week, I don't know when, but I had this moment with my parents this morning where I was like, okay, there's like something really beautiful happening here right now. And I... And I'm so glad that I had the wisdom to be patient with how I communicated with my family so that they could work on having the patience to be happy for me, if that makes sense. And so I think like what's missing here is I'm not seeing a lot of wisdom. I'm seeing a lot of hurt and pain and resentment and built up frustration from both the parent and the child. I'm not seeing a lot of patience or kindness. I'm seeing a lot of defense, which as the mother might, she might need to be defensive. Her child might've been torturing her this whole time. Um, and so I think that's something to, to consider is I don't always look at the child to judge if the parent did a good job because sometimes you can do a great job and your kids come out crazy or they choose to be ones, which, you know, I have a family member who chooses to be one and he, you know, it's just outrageous. The amount of, amount of excuses he uses to be the most worthless piece of shit is so offensive to everyone around him who works so fucking hard just to have the fucking basics. And so he, he just marries rich. That's his, that's his method. His method of getting through life is just marry rich, stupid, dumb women. So he doesn't have to be a participant while still blaming the world for why he can't do anything. So he just finds susceptible women to marry him. And that's what he does. And even if you tell these women, they don't care. I've tried to tell his wife a thousand times to divorce his ass. She won't listen to me. She's like, you just don't know him like I know him. I'm like, bitch, I know him better than you do, bitch. Please. When I was in elementary school, there's some people that faked having a oh hold up sorry preach japanese businesswoman says i think introspection is a tool that allows you to gain wisdom but you still need time and experience to that to that wisdom the introspection just allows you to evaluate life such that you gain wisdom i think so too yeah i think so too i can't wait to be wise i problem because they wanted to have glasses because glasses were cool you know, it's been going since then. Yeah. Then after that, when mm. after after it was glasses, it was glasses. Then after that, it was uh, mm. contacts, mm. right? I and by the way, the one in my life loves to talk about how like men need to be head of households and women should be stay at home moms. And somehow, after so many years, after two kids, 
Hmm, his wife still isn't a stay-at-home mom. Suspicious. Suspicious! After contacts, it was, before contacts, sorry, before contacts was braces. Some people were getting braces, you wanted to get braces. Some True. people that you know just wanted braces because they like your the attention. There's some people always- True, when braces were all the rage when I was a kid. Like, all the rage as a kid. Like literally, and my friends all had like colored, colored uh, braces and rubber bands, and you know. And even as a kid, I didn't really need braces. I mean, my teeth are kind of fucked up, but not really. And I was like, man, even I kind of want braces just to be a part of the crew. But did I get braces? No, we were poor. Always like whenever at, at, at when we hit high school, and it was like this store. Sorry, preach. Nova says, imagine having Brittany as a sister-in-law. Honestly, I'll. I would. I will. I am the most protective, loyal sister-in-law a bitch could ever desire. My farm brother, him and his wife and I, his wife and I get along so well. And I love her. And again, I'm the only sibling that um, they trust their kids with. Like, I'm the only sibling out of all my brother's siblings. I'm the only one who gets to babysit. I'm the only one they leave their kids with because they know I will fucking fight a bear off for these kids. Okay? My sister-in-law uh, my sister-in-law and I, we get along really, really well. Um, just because she's like, she's based. My sister-in-law is based. Or that you could buy some stuff. Yep. You, would, you would buy the bandage. It's like, oh, I hurt myself. Just, just to look like they hurt yourself because they like the attention. Oh, what happened to... Some people really just want to be asked, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Oh. What happened to... They just want to be asked that. Like, uh. hi, how are you? How was your day? Is none enough for Ooh. some motherfuckers. And they want to re-up on stuff. And now... A couple of ages back, years uh, years back, was ADD. Now mm. motherfuckers are on the spectrum. You know what I mean? They're Asperger. We can't say that no more. They're on the spectrum. And now it's all this rest and shit. So, yes, I think you are absolutely right. It's been, it's not new. It's been going on for ages. Yeah. And every, every five yeah. years, it's some new shit. <laughs> Jessica! Jessica says, I don't even have kids and I would trust you with my hypothetical children. Thank you. I'm honored. I'm honored. I really... Like, I, I, I will say out of all the skills I have, it's, it's really a priority in taking care of kids. I think that's why I was such a good nanny. Um, I remember I was working in Seattle as a nanny and one of the neighborhoods, though it was kind of upper, like, it was pretty good. It was beautiful. Um, uh, Ballard, you guys know Ballard in Seattle? It's a nice neighborhood. It's not like, it was nice. At least it was nice when I was there. And I would walk with, um my babies. I would walk with the babies. And there was a time where Green Lake Ballard and another area was being stalked by a guy who would follow women home. And then as they were unlocking their doors, he would push them into the house and shut the door on them. So I remember when I was a nanny, like my, my mom, my parents were like, Hey, you have to be really careful walking the kids. There's this guy going around assaulting women. And I said, okay. And like, they told me I had, I had weapons on me. I was ready for anything. I put their kids first. We were very cautious about how and where we walked. I, I would even like avoid walking at certain times. Like there's just something about an awareness that allows, like, again, uh, going back to what W said, her best guest ever, who said like common sense. Use your common sense. If there are bad people in the world, be prepared for bad things to happen. You said they're on the spectrum, and I kept thinking, like, yes, yes, asparagus. <laughs> Every time I hear Listen, ass for burgers, two, for twenty ass burgers, <laughs> for for, for uh, ass burgers, asparagus, ass bur ass burgers. <laughs> You hey, get the word for motherfuckers that do not give a shit. Hey, listen, Asperger's. <laughs> listen, I got Asperger's too. At, oh. at least what I say. Buns and things. Listen. When I say I power meters, when I say power meters, I acknowledge the fact that I say that shit wrong. You don't give a fuck. I guess Asperger's sounds fire. <laughs> hey, who ain't want Asperger's? Asperger's. Yeah, 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 yeah. You put an yeah, ass. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you, you put it. I'm just imagining an ass of burgers. Like an ass, but burgers. <gasps> I should like edit one of my videos to put a burger on it and then I'll tag Abba and preach. I'll be like Asperger's because that's what I'm doing. No, 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 no. You put a bitch on the side. Oh, what's together. with that audio? Asperger. <laughs> if you have a child who has autism um, or some audio. severe mental disability, generally speaking, the state has programs in place to give you money. That's why I also don't believe this girl and what she's saying. Your mom probably don't believe that shit. Yeah, no, she said, hey, no give me my check, nothing. stupid. You ain't got no mental nothing. Shut okay, okay, so that's, that's get what. get up out my house. But let's say, okay, 
you are telling the truth. You are, you are trans and all these things and she's misgendering you and all this other stuff. This is going to be the fucked up part. Ooh. Your parent in an ideal world is very supportive and wants to be by your side and help you. But sometimes However. they don't. And once you're a grown ass person, you got to, to realize like, that might not be the place you want to be at. Mm-hmm. You trying to sit there and be like, if she's like some kind of fundamental Christian, she don't believe in anything more than two genders and whatever else. Hey, it's her home. If you don't like that, you can't just spend that whole time trying to change her mind. Mm. Right? My mom wanted to run a Muslim household. All the power to her. I bounced. I had to. Real quick. Yes. Nigga, you... <laughs> can't big back Sandra when it's haram. You know what I'm saying? Uh, haram. Because Sandra <laughs> went by and put on no fucking uh, hijab. You get what I'm trying to say? It is what it is. You got to book it. That's your... You want to do it your way. You want to live your life for your, your values and your ideas and your identity. That's fine. Not under her, her roof. It's yeah. like... You, you want to not be religious? That's okay. Yeah. Not under her roof. Yeah. That's the way it works. When you're a child, they have a, a, a responsibility towards you while you're dependent, and you have to be. After that point passes, you've got to understand, if you want to have independent thought, you want to have an independent identity and do whatever you want, they're by no means obligated to keep you in their home. That's why I always tell people, which is why I'm so cognizant of the fact that if I make a baby, I'm asking that baby, like I'm forcing that baby into existence. I am in some ways, like I'm not being un unfair to the baby, right? Because we're humans, we're meant to procreate. But it is something that I pay a, an insane amount of attention to because I just know everyone's going to fuck up in different ways with their kids, right? Like it's just period. So I always contemplate like, okay, in what ways am I going to fuck it up with my kid, bro? And what ways? You know, everyone everyone always prejudges me, right? Like, oh, you're on OnlyFans. You've already fucked up your kid, okay? Um, Brittany, you're a conservative. Who, like, not me, Brittany, but hypothetical. Brittany, you're conservative and you go to church every weekend. You're fucking up your kid. Brittany, you're a vegan. You're fucking up your kid. Brittany, you eat meat. You're fucking up your kid. It's like no matter what I do, someone will find a way to, to like, depending on the kid, you're going to fuck him up anyways. So then you have to do your utmost best, utmost best, best to, ugh, best to, cause the least amount of harm harm reduction right is kind of my goal but yeah I am asking that kid to fucking like exist I'm like forcing them and then eventually I'm gonna kick him out of my house and be like get a fucking job you hoe but at the same time what I'm really supposed to do going back to what W said W for W W for W W literally said you you know your obligation as a, child, a parent is to kind of get those kids ready to be 18 and I don't think parents do it in the way they think they're doing it. I know my parents, for a fact, did not understand that they did not prepare us to be 18. They thought they did, and they did in a lot of ways, more ways than this girl. Okay? But at the same time, I had to learn a lot of it on my own. And so I'm hoping that when I have babies, I can take all of that wisdom and give them so much more. But I'm sure even mine's not going to be enough. You don't got to say. If they want to give you one, yes, but they don't have to. Wonder why? They pay the bills. The re the moment I had a choice in what happens in my mom's household or any household is when I paid the bills. And now my mom got to consult me. Because I pay the stuff. She want to come in here with that Muslim sound like, it's haram today, okay? Take out that. No, don't do that. Don't worry. I don't do that. I don't do that. I let, I let my mom pray. She can do whatever she wants. You know? She just can't get mad but at me. She just can't get mad at me it's if just, I don't say Bismillah. Yeah, you know, I'll be like, hey, it is what it is. It's, a diff it's just a different shit. Like, yeah. listen, mom. I bring pork every now and then, but I hide it. It's, it's, it we, we do things yeah, differently. But, yeah, but you're respectful enough to hide it. So good on you. Yeah, but when I cook the bacon, I make it extra loud. <laughs> she can hear the sizzling. <laughs> this is gonna add extra oil. Bruh, you know. Religious people are serious when Muslims don't eat pork. When they don't eat bacon, you know they're serious. And I'm like, I can't, I can't love anyone that much. Like, bacon, it smells, tastes, so oven-baked bacon. Bros, like, that's some serious dedication to God, bros. Yeah, 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 yeah. He deep fries bacon. Uh, uh, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey listen, ah. I have my own little pot, pot because we can't use the same pan. She's like, ugh, up. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 But, you know. I, said, I, I was playing Mark on stream. Or no, I was playing Mark on Smash. And I was just like, Khara, you piece of Khara, I hate you. And he was just like, oh, Khara. And, like, we're sitting there, like, insulting each other by calling each other a piece of shit. But it is, there's something, I really wish I learned how to speak Arabic. There's something really beautiful 
about being able to put a punch to every word you say. I didn't hear what you, I didn't understand what you said, but I understood what you said. Yeah, there's a different pan for Yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. You don't mix. It's fine. It's yeah. fine. But listen, it, it is what it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you're not paying the bills. Yeah. You're paying none of it. There you go. <laughs> Come on now. That's the, that, the that, you're not paying none of the bills. Whose house? Her house. Get the fuck out of here. You know what I mean? That, and, and I bet you are a lonely child. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, I'm just saying. I'm going to be honest with you. Ooh. I think she's faking most of it. That's just I, yeah, personal opinion. I've got the same sentiment. Let's see what you guys think in the I comments. I think you're lying. Dun, dun, dun.